Hey guys, Kat Sikor, IFBB Pro and Super League Pro, and you're watching Muscle Sport TV. And welcome back to MSTV. I am your host, Joe Pietaro, and we are being joined right now via Skype by Chris Gronkowski from iShaker. Chris, welcome to the program. What's up? Thanks for having me. Hey, listen, I got to tell you something, man. That Shark Tank episode was fantastic. You and your brothers, the, the, the exuberance that you guys show, the fun that you show, the love for each other, and you could see that... The Sharks, they really bought right into that. They enjoyed it. You had the uh, the flip cup contest and everything. And I thought it was pretty cool that you have a guy like A-Rod that was on the panel that day. Um, what was that whole process like? Because you really knocked it out of the park before your brothers even came out. I mean, your, your presentation was aces right there. So just give us a little quick background on that. Yeah, it was... Um a dream I had. Uh, I had an email when I was still playing in the NFL from my agent at the time that said they were looking for former players or actually current players as well that might like to go on the show. So I had this early lead, uh, had in the back of my mind, thought of this idea. And about three months into it, I said, hey, let's go back to that email. Let's see if they're still interested. And um, at that time, it was it was brand new. We had about 20 grand in sales. I said, hey, we got enough there. Let's throw it together. Let's see if they want to want to put us on. And, and I made this crazy video audition video i sent it in i was ripping my shirt off doing everything i could to catch their attention and uh and it worked you know they hit me back and said oh that that was that was intense but we loved it and they're all about the entertainment value i knew that going into it and uh and i played right into that so i got onto the show prep as much as i could i knew every question they'd asked in the previous eight episodes uh eight seasons actually and uh just made sure i was ready for it so went out there i was confident i was ready to go and it was a good show. Yeah, it definitely was. A lot of fun. And you could see just the way all of their faces were. They were enjoying everything that you were doing. And uh, obviously, you guys succeeded because Mark Cuban and A-Rod both are uh, investing in the company, right? Absolutely. Yeah, and that was like, I think, 15% for 150 grand. Am I correct with that? Yeah, went in. I got the valuation I was looking for. Uh, we were about six months into the company at that point, about 80000 in sales, so really tough to value the company at that point but i thought we got a pretty good offer out of it yeah and have you been able to gauge anything because i know that was fairly recent that whole thing with shark tank so have you been able to gauge the difference yet or are you still putting all of those pieces in place a oh, huge difference uh overnight exposure we went we did have a one-year update last november uh, we went from that eighty thousand in sales to uh over three million in sales uh wow. within the first year so Huge jump, huge exposure play. Uh, all that money that we got from the Sharks and from the show, we just invested it back in. So we had one bottle at the time, one color. Uh, we now have over six different varieties of bottles, and we have over just 100 different variations throughout all those bottles of different colors and, and sizes. Awesome, man. That's excellent. And uh, I loved your video on YouTube with the uh, comparison with Blend the Bottle. Chris Gronkowski here with iShaker. About two months after we launched, Blender Bottle came out with a very similar 26 ounce stainless steel shaker bottle. So today, I have them both here to compare the different features. So to start off with, they're both a kitchen grade stainless steel. They're both BPA free. The first thing you're gonna notice is the Blender Bottle is a little bit taller and a little bit skinnier, which allows it to fall over a lot easier. It's also a little bit harder to clean, whereas the wide opening tapered bottle design of the ice shaker it's easy to get in there, easy to clean, easy to fill as well. So first thing you're gonna notice is this flexible silicone lanyard on the ice shaker. Blender bottle has a loop feature instead. You start taking off the top, the first thing you're gonna notice is this plastic agitator. I'm gonna show you why this is great. With the blender bottle, you have a stainless ball inside of a stainless cup. It's extremely loud and extremely annoying. So instead we use this plastic agitator. It's great for mixing. Great part about it, twists right off, nice and easy, very easy to clean. And if you just want to take your bottle, use it as a water bottle, you don't even need to bring this with you. Just leave it at home. When you're ready to mix, just 
twist it back in, you're good to go. You look on the inside of the bottle, the ice shaker has these nice measurement markings inside the bottle that make it very easy to fill. You got five, 10, 15, and 20 ounce increments, along with milliliters as well. With the blender bottle, the markings are actually on the outside. They have these little speed bump like markings on the inside. It makes it a little more difficult to first read the outside and then try to match it up. Also, you'll notice that the blender bottle has a seam in it, whereas the ice shaker is seamless. So next, it's all about the tops, right? So with the ice shaker, we have the classic pop top. Nice and easy, pop it open, sip your favorite drink all day long, pop it back on, you're good to go. Blender bottle, I think this is one of the weaknesses of the bottle. First, if you don't tighten this all the way, you start unscrewing it, you're gonna actually unscrew the whole lid with it. But you're gonna spend time taking the top off. Another thing is they actually centered the spout on the bottle, so you have to tip it all the way up at the end to get the remaining of your drink out of it. So what ends up happening is, when you do this, this comes down and it hits you in the face, or it slides, so it will smack you in the side of the face instead. So those are the features of the two bottles. Now it's up to you to decide which one's better. It's a excellent <laughs> video, and um, I put a comment on it saying that my wife breaks my chops all the time because the blender bottle I have spills in the fridge. <laughs> so yeah. there was... <laughs> I said it's time yeah, for an no, ice we shaker. Were, uh, <laughs> absolutely. Yeah, we were the first to market with the product. Um, you know, within three months, Blender Bottle had a similar bottle out there. Uh, just wanted to go on there and really compare what the difference was from, from mine to theirs. And I think I did a pretty good job of highlighting uh, what yes. makes our product better. Absolutely. And the thing that I really find fascinating now, obviously, uh, you know, you, you know, you've been training your whole life and everything. And so you've been using shaker bottles. I'm 51. I've been working out since I'm 14. I've used these things ad nauseum and being in the industry, I get a lot of these different things and I've tried a lot of different ones. And the, I'm shocked the way you said that the ice can stay for 30 hours in a 75 degree room without melting. I know it's the double wall and all of that stuff, but just give us a little background on that. Like, how did you harness that uh, highlight of it? Yeah, it's it's a it's a cool technology that's been around for a while. Thermos used it, used it back in the day, but we really took that technology and, and made it into a more usable cup with a lot of different features that uh no one else was really doing at the time so what they do is actually vacuum seal the air in between the two walls of the metal out uh, this creates a vacuum and because of that vacuum no air is or heat or cold is able to go in between it so mm -hmm. really the only way for the air to escape or, or the heat or cold to escape is through the lid and at that point it takes um when you fill it with just ice it will take over 30 hours for it all to melt i've actually put it in my hot car in texas in my cup holder filled it with ice and it lasted, uh, my car was, I think, 130 degrees in the direct heat, and um, it was still 24 hours later before it all melted. So wow. the technology is sound. It's, it's solid, and um, it's not going to sweat. Your hands aren't going to get cold. Uh, just just a great product that really I was shocked that no one had created yet. Yeah, no, that that's, uh, you got a lot of different uh, functionality of the whole thing with the um, the, the part at the top and everything, that uh, the blender part, so that that's the agitator. To me, that uh, means a lot uh, to guys that have been using these things for a while. And that's the one thing that pisses me off now that we're getting the warmer weather. Uh, I go to the gym with a full thing of ice water, and yep. halfway through my workout, you know, half or more than half the ice is, is gone in a regular type of uh, uh, drinking bottle. So um, you definitely have something uh, a, a highlight on that. Um, what made you th go into that direction? I mean, there's so many different things in the fitness industry that you could have went into. What made you decide to go with the shaker cup? Really exactly what you just said. Uh, I went to the gym in Texas. It was 100 degrees out. By the time I got there, all the ice had melted. You know, there's condensation all over the place. I was actually making little sweat rings on the ground. I was making little designs. And I know exactly what you mean. I leave them all over the gym. <laughs> yeah, I took a sip and I, it got to the point where I was like, man, this is warm. It tastes terrible. I'm sweating. I want to cool down a little bit. You know, let me just go home. There's other bottles out there. There's all kinds of bottles out there that are insulated. I'll just go home, grab one that I can use for everything. You know, the, the main goal was let me find a shaker bottle I could use for the gym. 
then bring it to the office, then bring it home, bring it to the kids' game, do whatever with it instead of having to go and you know, grab five different bottles throughout the day. So mm-hmm. went home, looked for an insulated bottle online, and figured I'd go on Google, Amazon, whatever it was, and there'd be a, a bunch of them there. And when I looked, there was other stainless bottles, but they weren't insulated. And being stainless, it's actually a conductor. So if you put cold into a bottle that's not insulated, it is freezing cold. I mean, it's worse mm-hmm. than the plastic bottle. So I uh, went back, and, and I said, man, this is something, a simple idea that nobody's doing that I know would do really well. So I uh, used my resources I already had. We already bring in product. Uh, we already had another business where we were personalizing and engraving tumblers and, and other cups of the sort mm-hmm. and uh, use those same connections to then manufacture this product. Yeah, definitely. And then, so you basically just, you know, throwing, throwing the thing in Google showed that the, there was not something that was exactly like that out there. So, um, and I did notice also on GronkFitness.com that you guys did have uh, other stuff going on with the engraving. So, uh, it kind of, it kind of slid in hand in hand, but. How you doing? My name is John Sikoris, and this is Sharice Sikoris, and we're the owners of Titan Medical Center. Another part, see, my company, I like, we like to have fun. And obviously you guys do as well. And I loved your TMZ um, interview where you talk about playing beer pong and you could use that for cocktails. And it's not just all of this skinless chicken and fucking push ups bullshit. I mean, to me, that's, it's, <laughs> God damn, this shit's boring sometimes. So you guys have, have been able to put the fun aspect also into using this shaker cup also so give us a little insight about that part of it yeah what's huge about it is uh the agitator actually twists in and twists out so a lot of people will they'll put fruit in it infuse their drinks but a lot of people they're gonna put they're gonna pour drinks with it as well it's actually a great amateur cocktail shaker so <laughs> you want to make some you want to make some uh some drinks you now it's going to work as a filter uh so you can pour ice in there put you know your drink in there shake it up you could actually pour shots without that ice coming through uh, what it also does, too, is even when you're drinking out of a, another insulated cup that doesn't have our agitator, I mean, you're just trying to sip through ice the whole time because ice floats. It's going to sit at the top. When you put yeah. a lot in there, keep your drink cold. You know, you're just fighting through that ice the whole time. So what's cool about ours is it's going to filter it for you so you're not just sitting there trying to get through ice. You're always going to have good water flow. But, hey, my main my main uh, selling point is the bottle also floats in the pool with you. So <laughs> if you're trying to play you know, pool beer pong, you don't want that chlorine in your cups, you float your ice shaker next to you, you know, fill it up with whatever drink you're trying to have, and whenever they make a cup, you just take a sip. So a really an amazing cup for vacations or just sitting by the pool. And what I wanted to design was just something that it wasn't just for the gym. This was something you were going to use all day, every day. If you like to party, you know, just for, you know, trying to drink more water, uh, going to the gym, mm-hmm. but really any aspect of life you can use this cup for. Yeah, not just, uh, you know, it's not not for meatheads only kind of thing. Definitely um, to have fun, like you said, summertime in the pool and uh, having a drink by the pool. There's nothing wrong with that. We, I think uh, we earned it after going to the gym and sweating for a few hours. You earned to have a couple on the weekend maybe, so there's nothing wrong with that. Man. Absolutely, man. I'm a big proponent of, of enjoying myself. Um, a little bit about your, your career. You played uh, in the NFL as a fullback for a few years. Um, it must have been pretty cool. I mean, you were on Dallas, Denver. I mean, you were on a few different teams. And uh, how how was that whole experience for yourself, being in the NFL and actually, you know, suiting up and playing in these big stadiums? Hey, it, it was unreal. It was uh, something I didn't think was in the cards for me. So I uh, got the best re- degree I possibly could when I went to college. Uh, really, I didn't even have a D1 offer. I actually got a D1 offer at the last minute. And I, and I tell the story of the time because I – I think it's awesome. Uh, really, I got the offer because of my grades. I uh, ended up doing a, a last-minute offer because the University of Maryland, they were losing a bunch of guys to grades, and their the team as well was about to go on academic probation. My older brother Dan was there. He was doing really well. He had uh, close to a 4.0, and 
I was coming out, I was actually going to the University of Pennsylvania, uh, got accepted into the Wharton Business School, one of the best business schools wow. in the world. And yeah. um, you know, I was about to pay you know, 100K a year to go to school. Uh, <laughs> got this last offer to play Division One, and, and I took it, and I ran with it. And um, you know, I ended up transferring out to, to Arizona, but I uh, started my junior year, and, and that was the first time I even thought I had a chance of, of, of doing anything with my career. Uh, I was always told one in a million you know, I wasn't the best player in my own family. Uh, I was probably not the third best. So <laughs> I need to, to think I'll get to that point. Uh, anything goes in the cards for me. So I got the best degree I could, and I had one shot. And I, I got uh, went undrafted to the Cowboys and ended up rooming with a, an old teammate of mine from Maryland. And we both went undrafted, and we made a pack that day that you know, an undrafted free agent hasn't made this team in 10 years, and we're going to both make this team. So... It was one of those things where, hey, this is a once in a lifetime opportunity. Let's take advantage of it. And both of us that ended up making making the team, the, the active roster that year. So that's awesome. Who was yeah, your roommate? Are, what, what was the guy's name? The Cowboys. Uh, Phil Costa. He ended up playing uh, about five years in the pros as well. Uh, signed a big contract with the Colts. Walked away from it for a back injury. Ah, uh, sucks, gave his signing gave over two million dollars back to to walk away from the game because of injury. That really sucks, man, especially after, you know, he 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 uh he made it as an undrafted. But that's that's uh, you know just the, it goes to show you that it doesn't matter, you know, who you are or where you came from if you put the effort into like even Danny Amendola. We're talking about, you know, guys Wayne Crabat, I'm a Jet, you know, I'm sorry, I'm a Jet guy. I'm from <laughs> from New York. I've always been a Jet fan. But um so you see guys like that that, you know, one in a billion chances and and they make it. So that's an testament to uh, what you put your effort into that. Um, how did it feel when it was time when that was over? Was it easy to accept that? Because I know you had a lot of other things going on business wise. Yeah, it, it was. Um, you know, like I said, it, it was something that I didn't think I'd make. So I, I got three. I started three years. Uh, at that three year point, if you play in at least three games, uh, and I played. I played. Started all year for all three years. You get you get vetted. So you get your pension. You get your four hundred one k. You get the retirement benefits, and uh, so I got all that. I actually mm-hmm. got a fourth year as well, which just added on to it. So at that point, um, you know, I ended up getting hurt in camp, and if you get hurt in camp, you know, it's it's see you later. So yeah. I <laughs> I got cut with uh, with an injury settlement, and uh, I did my best to come back, and ended up being a high ankle sprain that took about three months, and they told me it would take about three weeks. But um, <laughs> tried to come back from that, had a tryout, ran, and, and ruptured my hamstring. Um, uh, I was training for it. I might have been overtraining because I was just I was tight going into it, and uh, my second step out of the box, I, I tore it. And at that point, it was hey, either get surgery and repair it and have it reattached, or just let it scar down and live a normal life because you're not going to have the explosiveness that you had when you're playing. So mm-hmm. I was doing really well with uh, with our first business that we still have. And um, at that point, I said, hey, you know, we're making great money and great life. Uh, you know, I don't really need this at this point. Let's, it's time to move on. So uh, it wasn't like everyone was knocking on my door trying to get me to come play for them. Uh, <laughs> at that point where, hey, it was a great career. You did everything you needed to. You know, let's let's move on to the next point. So it's a yeah. struggle for most guys. Uh, really hard because it's all you've done your whole life. And for me, it was kind of a, an injury. was kind of a blessing. It was, hey, you know, your, your time has come. And yeah. You really are going to be 100% dedicated to it, and you're going to go have surgery, and you're going to come back from that. And you know, it could have been a year before I was even back on my feet. So uh, for me, it was almost a blessing that it was, hey, you know, your time has come. It's over. There's no regrets at this point. Let's go on to the next thing. Yeah, that's a great attitude to have. And it's. I just find it ridiculously amazing that all five of you guys have just been – incredible athlete four in the nfl and your other brother gordy jr who's your dad's gordy um is was baseball player and uh it's what i mean i i'm a beaming proud father my son was on varsity football how your father must have been like just elated every day watching you guys just rise up and succeed like that all he is oh absolutely both my parents were i mean ecstatic about it they still Every person they see or they meet somehow turns into a conversation about <laughs> how how, uh, how we all played in the NFL or, or played professional. So uh, couldn't be more proud. And, I mean, and they should be. Uh, they put just the, just the effort to, to get us there to that point. Uh, my dad coaching us. My mom 
basically, a, I mean, more than a full time job, just feeding us, bringing us to practice. <laughs> it was it wasn't one practice a day. It was multiple teams for five kids. I mean, it was oh, it's you know, insane. Ten, 10 yeah. to fifteen different practices or games that she was. It was a full schedule. I mean, it was. You know, where's the calendar at? Let's let's you know communicate with other moms on the team so we could get them there because I have three other kids that have to be somewhere else at the same time. So <laughs> I mean, it was it was incredible what what she what had to do to just to get us to practice on time, and she always did. So yeah, uh, amazing. That's definitely a testimony for them, and at the same time, also made sure that we all excelled in school as well. Yeah, which a lot is... of people look at us and, and they don't think we excelled in school, but we all had really really good grades, and we really weren't allowed to. To watch TV or go out and play until our homework was done. So great, definitely. That's awesome. To my parents. Well, you get accepted to Wharton. I mean, I mean that that's it speaks for itself. Uh, I, you know, you weren't just a jock. You know, <laughs> yeah, obviously you had a lot going on besides the ability to play ball. But you guys are all fairly close in age, though, too, right? I mean, I Absolutely. saw like old videos of you guys playing hockey in your house and stuff on yep. uh, on on YouTube. I looked up some stuff. I mean, and you guys are all fairly close in age. That must have been kind of fun and difficult at the same time, right? Growing up, it it was awesome. I mean, we we're all about we we're all two grades apart. The youngest, uh, Glenn, was four four grades from Rob, but the rest of us were all within a year and a half of each other. Wow. So uh, year and a half to two years. So it was. <laughs> It was mayhem, man. It was, and it wasn't just us. It was, you know, you had your friend over or a couple friends over. Your brothers all had. We were that house that just everyone came. Everybody to hung out, constantly competing. It was just nonstop. It, and we're never inside. It was always you know, we're playing this game, that game, and some kind of yeah. fight going on. Everyone was just battling nonstop, and it was fun, man. It was a great neighborhood to grow up in, and I think that's really what what bred us to, to be so competitive. Yeah, you didn't lose against your brother or your brother's friend or. You know, whoever it was, you just you could not lose. So it was always let's fight to the end, and yeah. that's what we did. Buffalo, cold neighborhood to grow up in too. So I mean, <laughs> <laughs> hey, you're used to it. You wear shorts when it's fifty degrees out. <laughs> Like you're just you're still kids having fun. I mean, even though you're involved in all of these businesses and you all had pro careers and things like that, do you still feel like you guys are still that young kids playing ball in the basement together? Yeah, absolutely. We were all just uh, at our kids' camp this weekend, and that's exactly how it felt. Um, still competing in everything, uh, and we we're playing. We we're playing basketball against each other, uh, cornhole, really competing in everything, man. We take off our shirt and say, "Yo." Uh, <laughs> yeah, who's more Jack? Okay, you know, who's looking better and, and have everyone else judges? So, uh, still to this day, I mean, it's 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 that pride, it's that competitiveness that still gets me up every morning and gets me lifting because yeah. I don't want to be that that one guy in the family that isn't Jack. You know, that's not. Uh, <laughs> Got to make sure I step it up each and every day. Good but for yeah, you, we, man. Yeah, we have a great time, and, and that's really the core of the business as well. Is you know, we're all into fitness, we're all into health, and, and we just help each other out. So. You know, I'm the only one that actually owns uh, any part of Ice Shaker, but I'm going to help out my brothers who own Gronk Fitness, and they're going to walk into a gym and say, hey, here's our fitness equipment. Oh, by the way, here's an Ice Shaker. Check it out. Uh, yeah. you know, and I'll send them free gifts to help them. They'll get some deals, close some deals, and, and they'll do the same for me. And same thing when I go here. If I walk into a gym selling an Ice Shaker, it's, hey, you know, by the way, if you guys need some accessories or any kind of gym equipment, let me know because that's what our family does. So yeah, uh, everything we do kind of just – uh co-mingles with each other and we all help each other out and, and that's what makes it great do you see yourself breaking into different uh, other parts of the fitness or athletics to make more products besides ice shaker absolutely yeah we actually did uh we bought about two months ago uh protein cookie company so oh wow it's called, it's called the protein cookie company We're i know gonna, i know the company yeah i didn't know you guys bought yeah, that good for you bro we bought them, uh, you know, we immediately took them into, they were in every HEB grocery store in Texas. We took them into 500 Kroger's, uh, went immediately to the Northeast, got into 750 convenience stores, and uh, 
just had a meeting last week with Target to go into every Target in, in Texas as well. So fantastic, uh, amazing cookie. Tastes like a cookie, but has 20 grams of protein or more in it. And um, it's just stuff like this that that you know I was collaborating with this company. I loved it. It had a great organic reach. I ate it every day. I believed in it myself. And um, opportunity came to help you know buy it and then help grow it. And uh, you know we jumped all over it. So. I uh, always have been just really, really smart with our money. Uh, parents made us earn everything we had. We never got anything for free. Uh, we didn't get cars. And, and, and really, our parents couldn't afford it at first. Uh, everyone thinks we grew up with money. My dad worked two jobs. He had five kids. We, we all had bunk beds. You know, we had a four-bedroom house with oh, seven I, people. In. I grew up with bunk beds too, bro. I know what you're talking about. <laughs> yeah. So a lot of times, we, you know, we, and, I, and I hear it all the time now, hey, it must be nice that you can afford this, this, and this. And it's like, yeah, it, it is nice because I worked my ass off for it. Damn right. And that's what parents raised us. And, and yeah, I'm going to, you know, if it, and, and we still don't. I mean, we still, Rob, to his last – you know, year in the NFL was still taking home meals from the complex because you know, that's just how we were. And yeah. we grew up in college with 50 bucks a week, you know, you have 50 bucks a month, and all you're doing is scrapping for food. You know, you're taking home meals. You're doing whatever you can to get by. And Make it that's last. just all we've got mentality. And, and now that we have money, it's kind of – you don't really lose that mentality. I mean, you're not cheap about it, but, you know, you're going to use your resources and, and do what you need to do to, to, to survive and, and to thrive. So yeah, that's it's, really what we've done in business is, hey – you know, we've done really well, but let's reinvest it. You know, I took all my money from the NFL and I said, hey, let's put it into this company. And the first company we grew was an engraving company. And uh, you know, I did that five, six years. We still have it. My little brother now works for it. Uh, it's still growing to this day. It's one of mm-hmm. the biggest and best online personalized gift shops. And it was all because, you know, we didn't go out there and buy nice cars and, and buy a brand new house. It was, hey, I bought, I bought a used car with my first contract. And, you know, I didn't buy a house until I was done with the NFL and, Everything that we did was, hey, you know, let's plan for the future. Let's save our money. Let's be smart about it. And that's why we've been able to be so successful. Yeah. I have a magazine. I think yep. a Gronkowski family photo on the cover of this magazine wearing Ice, Shake, Ice Shaker and Gronk Fitness. What do you think, bro? You tell me. I like that. I, like that. <laughs> I, I hope so. Brother's I like back in you shape, man. It was, you, you're you're the did. type of guy, and your whole the whole demeanor. I could tell, man. I I I I, could, I knew that as soon as you know we spoke uh, via uh, LinkedIn, you're a straight shooter. You're a regular guy. Our company's a, a straight shooting company. Uh, I, I I love talking shit about competition, so that's why I like when you had that. You know, here's our company. Here's here's the, everybody thinks yeah. blend the bottles, the Cadillac. Of shakers, well, there's a new Cadillac in town. You're the Mercedes Benz, actually. So. Yeah, that's right. I I definitely want to speak to you about having you guys on the cover because that's something that deserves a magazine cover. And people talk crap about print. I don't know I'm I'm old. I like print magazines though. So yeah. <laughs> I think that's something that we we can definitely talk about off air. I'm definitely interested. I would love to get you and your brothers on this cover. Will promote the shit out of that product because I think it's a great product. I haven't even tried it yet. I can tell just by looking at it, man. I can just by looking at it. If you're telling me it doesn't spill in the fridge, I'm already ahead of the game. You know? yeah, that's right. So plug away, man. Give up. Give out the websites, Instagram, everything, whatever you want to plug. Twitter. Absolutely, yeah. Check us out, IceShaker.com. Uh, all of our social medias for that is Ice Shaker Bottle. So Instagram, Twitter, uh, Facebook, YouTube. Uh, the whole deal, and then uh, for me at Chris Gronkowski, and then um, that's also your know, Twitter, Instagram, everything. You know, I'm I'm very active. I'm gonna have a story running pretty much 24 seven, showing behind the scenes. I like to really show people everything. Uh, you know what we're doing on a daily basis, some of our big wins, mm-hmm. uh, my workouts. I like to post a lot of workouts, and I think people really appreciate that as well because you know it's it's, it's something hard for people to do. Is hey, what do I do when I go to the gym and they could come to my page and say, "Hey, oh, Chris did this today. I'm doing it too," and they do, and they you know give mm-hmm. me feedback on it and what they like, what they didn't. So huge as well, even down to meals where I, I like to post a lot of the stuff that I eat as well. But uh, check that out. Uh, with that, uh, the pro- or protein cookie co as well on, on uh, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook is is our new cookie company, and really look for our new launch. We're about two weeks out from the new packaging. It will be you know Grok Fitness approved now. <laughs> A new formula as well, so it, it should taste even better, uh, a little more moist, and um, got rid of any unnatural uh, artificial ingredients. So it will be an all-natural cookie now as well. So 
pretty excited about that to drop as well. So, yeah, check us out. Follow, like, comment. Hit me up, man. Dude, perfect fit. We're a bodybuilding, fitness, and sports magazine, and you're a pro athlete that's into bodybuilding and fitness. I, I see a marriage here, bro. You tell me if I'm wrong. Maybe I'm wrong, but I like what I'm hearing right now. Hey, I'm all in, man. I, I like, <laughs> you know, like to see myself on that front cover, man. <laughs> Two more weeks. <laughs> we're going to say goodbye because we're going to commercial break, but don't hang up because we're going to talk business right after this interview is over. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Chris Grawkowski, thank you so much for joining us today on MSTV, and we will see you on a cover soon. I like it. I'll start working. Thanks for having me. <laughs> this is Robert Frank, 615, and you're watching Muscle Sport TV, the most jacked and tan show on the fucking internet. Soma Derm Gel, a cutting edge scientific breakthrough utilizing the power of HGH. When taking hormones orally, Pills and sprays lose a majority of their potency in the mouth and gut, rendering those products ineffective. And injectable forms of HGH are not only invasive and expensive, but they have the potential to cause serious side effects. Luckily, Somaderm Gel is a low-dose, transdermal form, which has been formulated to slowly elevate HGH levels in the body. Somaderm Gel, the ageless standard. Bedroom Bully Bonanza. Bedroom Bully Bonanza. MSTV. Muscle Sports Mag. What's up, freaks? So, just chilling. Waiting for 8 o'clock. Waiting to join Kim on her show. Fit Chicks Live. With ravishing Kim Haynes. This is Kim Haynes Fit Ass, and you're watching Muscle Sport Media. What would I love to do to her with my tongue? Before I even got my cock out, what would I do to her with my tongue? My thoughts could get me thrown in jail right now. So, Bedroom Bully, aka J Masters, suffered a horrific squat injury April the 6th. Was taken to the hospital by the paramedics. Emergency room doctors diagnosed a double quadricep tendon tear. Emergency surgery was scheduled. Um, I was bumped from the from from surgery that day due to a really bad car accident. And in South Dakota, um, Rapid City, South Dakota, you know, is the biggest hospital in that area. So the victims from the uh, car accident all came to my ho hospital. So. Um, their emergency took precedence, obviously, over a guy who was in stable condition with quad tendon tears. And um, I didn't receive surgery until the next day, April 7th. Surgeon met with me following the surgery. I don't recall if it was the next day. I was on heavy opiates at the time. Told me that I had torn both tendons completely from the bone. And uh, no tissue on the left bone at all. Torn completely clean. And then he said on the right knee, there was only trace tissue 
on the bone. So he said he, he, he reattached them both identically. Included some uh, drilling holes in my kneecaps and reattaching my uh, tendons with steel cable. Um, real nice. Um, after about four days, I was uh, taken in an ambulance down the street to uh, the hospital's inpatient um, physical therapy center. I believe I stayed there for about four and a half weeks. First time I've ever shit in a bedpan. First time I've ever had anyone have to wipe my ass. It's a humbling fucking experience. Anyway, I was able to finally get out of bed, use a walker, doing damn near three hours of PT a day. Um, it's one of the requirements to go there, is to be willing to work three hours a day. Um, I'm wearing their graduation shirt they give you. When you leave, I speak in South Dakota. I got nothing, nothing bad to say about the people of Rapid City, South Dakota. Thank you. Um, anyway, I left there in a walker. Um, I had gotten my knees outside of the braces with my therapist to about 60 degrees of knee flexion. But obviously, when I left, using the walker, they had my braces locked in the peg leg position. Um, I couldn't travel in that state being peg legged. Um, but the plan that the surgeon had laid out for me, I knew that if I went and got a hotel room for a week, uh, after seven days in the hotel room, I was going to be able to open up my braces to 45 degrees, so that's what I did. And uh, Adam McLeod uh, paid for a rental car, and uh, his good friend Moses Mania flew into town and drove me 2,140 miles all the way back to Delta Beach, Florida. So I'd like to thank Adam McLeod in Moses Mania. I don't know Moses' last name. If you're fucking Moses, I guess you don't need a last name. You're just Moses. Um, but anyway, been home for about two weeks. Been training upper body for three weeks. I trained that first week in Rapid City while I was living in the hotel. Took a lift, car service, to Planet Fitness. Trained upper body that week. I've been home, training upper body. So the upper body is coming back quick. You, uh, you gain back that strength really fast. Um, Sunday I was able to open up my braces to 90 degrees. Um, while in my braces, I am allowed full weight bearing. So if I've got my braces on and I feel up to it, I am allowed to walk without the walker. I have, I have full weight bearing. Um, but I don't do that all the time. I do it around the house where it's convenient. But when I go out, I take the walker with me. You know, if you want to go to the grocery store or the gym, whatever. Um, so I'm about eight and a half weeks into this ordeal. Uh, like I said, the surgery was April the 7th. Ten weeks out, I'm supposed to start slowly weaning myself off the braces. And I'm allowed to start doing some minor strength training. Which, when I say minor, I mean minor. Um, at first, getting on the recumbent stationary bike is going to be about the extent of my strength training. I don't quite have the range of motion for it yet, 
the research I've done has told me that you need about 90 minutes, 90 degrees of knee flexion for the recumbent bike. So hopefully, um, I, think it, I think my 10 weeks will be June 16th, if I'm not mistaken, if that's a Sunday. Yeah, somewhere in that ballpark. Uh, hopefully I can get on the recumbent bike and start a little uh, stationary bike therapy for rebuilding these quads. Each of my quads um, feels like I've lost a lot of muscle. So uh, I'm not in a hurry to get back on the weights. I know that the recumbent bike is going to build up my muscle um, with zero impact. So while there, are, while there are easy gains to be made, why do anything more difficult than make easy gains? And that's what the recumbent bike is going to do for me. I'll continue to lift weights up her body. Then when I'm done, I'll go do the recumbent bike and I'll work on these quads. Um, well, obviously, I'll start out with some leg extensions eventually. Um, real light. I don't know. How light can you go on a leg extension? If you pull the pin out, what do you get? One, one plate? I don't know if I've ever done that in my life. That's going to be a trip. So who knows if I can even do one plate on a leg extension? I don't know. I, I'm not allowed to do any quad strengthening right now. And it's been eight and a half weeks. I'm on zero quad work. I'm allowed to work every other muscle in my body. My hips, my glutes, my hamstrings, my inner, outer thigh. I'm, I do, I've done all those exercises in rehab. But no quad work. I mean, I can activate my quad by flexing it. But stationary. You know, isometric. Flexing. Um, so, you guys are about up to speed here on the Bedroom Bully Bonanza. Uh, I'm going to sign out for now and I'll get ready to go live with the fabulous Kim Haynes. What's going on you guys? Nick here with Nick Strength and Power and you are watching Muscle Sport TV.
We are out of time. Once again, thank you so much for joining us this week on MSTV. $32 a year, free shipping in the United States. Go to MuscleSportMag.com slash subscribe. Greg Valentino issue, Titan Medical Center. The title sponsor of two of our programs, one of them being Greg Valentino talking smack, the other being AMA on Thursdays on Instagram Live. Greg issues almost sold out, and I am not going to print any more. Get it while you can. MuscleSportMag.com slash subscribe, and we'll see you guys in a week.